Hey, hey everybody, Brock Freddy here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this absolutely incredible 2022 Toyota Tundra. It's been 16 years since Toyota had a new Tundra design. This particular Tundra has been six years in the making. It actually took them six years to develop everything, receive customer feedback, and basically build the truck that you wanted. And in this video, we're gonna look at the inside, we're gonna look at the outside, and we're gonna go over all the changes that have been put into this Tundra. Let's jump right in into this 2022 Toyota Tundra Limited. Now when you see one of these in person, the first thing you might actually think is the fact that um, it, it actually might look a little bit smaller or look not as big as you in initially thought. Uh, I think a, one of the reasons that contributes to that is the fact that the hood goes kind of down and it makes it look shorter, but it's not actually, uh, you know, where the old Tundra was just one big square and it went straight and then it just cut off. This one, uh, it, it goes down a little bit, but that front, is that just not absolutely amazing? I love the way that looks. The grill looks big and bold and aggressive. Another one of the really cool things is the turn signals. I'm gonna hit unlock here. Look at that, you see how that does? That is such a good look, <laughs> I absolutely love that. So you can see what the turn signal is like. Let's cut on the headlights and we can get it. We hear you. So first of all, take a look at the design of this thing. It, it's just big and it's bold and it kind of wraps around onto the front quarter panel here, comes down into a big block right down here, and then goes toward the front of the vehicle so you can see it really, really well, this big, huge daytime running light from the very front. Then you've got, it looks like there are bolts that are kind of right here in between panels. And then it looks like uh, you've got your stacked LED headlights. There's a better view of that LED headlight that I was talking about. So take a look at that. Isn't that fantastic looking? You've got these little, kind of partitions right there on each end of it. It's almost like a shelf right here. That's that's a, just a good looking headlight setup. And now your fog lights, look where your fog lights are situation, situated. <laughs> They're right here, kind of in the middle of the Tundra. Normally your fog lights are gonna be the very lowest point and on the outer sides, but you've got fog lights that are right here in the middle almost of the grill. That's, that's kind of a neat situation. I, I guess Toyota's got a reason for that design of putting your fog lights there, but that's where they are. I like how you've got Tundra big and bold right there on the bottom portion of the grill. And then you've got a sensor right there. That's gonna be your park assist. That's your sensors that beep when you get too close to something in a parking lot. There's a camera right there directly under the Toyota emblem. I think this is gonna be one of your safety systems right here, maybe radar crews. I know that um, there are some safety systems that are gonna be right up here on the other side of the rear view mirror but I think this one is going to be maybe radar cruise control. So that is such a nice, nice look to the front of the Tundra. And like I said, it, it doesn't feel as big uh, when, it, when you see it in person as it looks on the internet. But golly, look at those wheel arches, how big and beefy they are. They make it look a lot more athletic, both front and rear. I love how it all comes together. And how about these wheels? Uh, I love the spokes on this one. I think this is a six spoke. You can see there that graphite looking spoke right there. One, two, three, four, five, six spokes on the wheels there. And these are sitting on 265, 65R20. Big old truck tires. I love those, those are fantastic. The front brakes are ventilated so that air passes through so that they stay cooler during spirited driving. And let's take a look at the back ones. It looks like the back ones are ventilated as well. So that's a great, great thing. Make sure that your brakes stay cool all the way around. There you've got your limited badging right there. Looking nice with the chrome trim all around the windows right there. That's a great look. Also your chrome door handles. That looks really, really good. But gosh, check out the angles that you have on the body right there. That just gives it such a good look. Very, very muscular. I love how that works. Then we're moving around to the back. Take a look at these tail lights. How they're like this big, vert three big vertical lines right there. Let's unlock it and see if we can get a view of what the turn signals look like. Ooh, look at that. There you go, there's that turn signal. 
That's what I thought they would look like. Graduated blinking there, starting from the inside. Here's one of the coolest features I, that I can think of, and it has to do with the tailgate. You see that button right there? There's a button, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of integrated into this black portion. There's only one button and it's on the driver's side. I'll show you what that's for right now. So let's say you were leaving a place and you had boxes in your hands and you only had use of your elbow. Whenever you approach the Tundra, all you need to do to open the tailgate is to bump that with your elbow. That is so cool. On the top of the tailgate, you have Tundra in big, bold letters there. The truck bed has tons of lights. You can see there's two lights there, LED, then one on the right, then one on the left. And those are actually on whenever the, uh, the truck is like on or running. If you want them to be on, you can flip a switch on the inside of the truck. Uh, but they're also on basically anytime the doors are unlocked. I noticed that I was actually starting to film on the outside and these lights were on, but the truck wasn't on and I'm like, what the heck? I hit lock on the, on the doors and they cut off. So they're on a lot and that's a super helpful thing. Here's a track system and there are these cleats that are inside the truck. This is old technology. This has been out for a while, but I figured I would point that out. You can slide these off and it will allow you to slide these big cleats into this system. And of course there's one on the other side as well. And they're also on the back of the uh, cabin or the cab. Uh, and that allows you to have big tie downs that you can customize the configuration for. Really nice. There is an outlet right there. And this allows you to put boards down into here and have compartments there. Uh, if you wanna make, like if you, if you had a board, piece of wood you could slide the wood down in there and slide it here and then that would basically give you kind of an open trunk right there this is a five and a half foot bed uh, and now uh, Toyota is giving you the ability to get a six and a half foot bed on the crew max on the big one so that's the first time that that's been offered uh, this one though is the five and a half foot bed but Toyota listened to everybody and people were saying that they wanted to have the abil ability to have a six and a half foot bed on the crew max so that is that again five and a half foot one on this one the tailgate is super light and it goes right up and in uh, also this is a composite bed uh, the composite bed has been around on the Tacoma since 2005 and people were asking for the composite bed to be on the Tundra so that's what Toyota did they put the composite bed it's lighter it's more dent resistant and it's also rust resistant um, and so the composite bed aluminum bed is is on the Tundra now so that's a very cool update as well here are some things for trailering you know what that stuff all looks like right there uh, and then here's your tow hitch uh, another thing that you're going to notice underneath here is the lack of leaf springs that's because it's a multi-link suspension system in the back that's going to give it a much better ride less trucky uh, much better feel for the tundra notice also that you have a single tailpipe coming out of the left side and I was told that that has to do with the configuration of the gas tank and weight distribution. I'll take their word for it. That was a service writer that told me that. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, there's your spare tire right there. So overall, it's going to have a better ride and a better feel. Another thing about it as well is that you're going to have the ability to get a um, an adjustable suspension for the rear of the Tundra and I think that's on the TRD Pro version uh, it's not on this version and it's a, this is a two-wheel drive limited but as far as the adjustable suspension it can adjust based on the payload so that if you have a, a heavy payload in the back then uh, you're, you don't want your headlights shooting up into space so it will automatically adjust uh, the rear suspension that's super nice let's take a quick look at the window sticker here you can see that right up here under mechanical and performance it's got the iForce 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 dual overhead cam 24 valve with dual vvti that's variable valve timing with intelligence 389 horsepower with 479 pound foot of torque 
Here's another cool thing. It's got a 10-speed automatic transmission with sequential shift. Now, what's incredible is that that 10-speed automatic transmission with sequential shift is also available in the iForce Max uh, version of it with the hybrid engine. So this is the first application of a hybrid engine in a Toyota that does not have a continuous variable transmission. So it's a hybrid with a motor generator in between the engine and the transmission motor generator that's gonna boost fuel economy, boost horsepower and boost torque, but still have a 10 speed sequential shift automatic transmission. Unbelievable technology. And so you can see here that you've got all, all these different things, but the reason that I wanted to point out the window sticker is because of this fuel economy. You've got a 389 horsepower monster that can, that's can that got 479 torque, but you're getting 18 in the city and 23 on the highway combined 20 miles per gallon. And then these are the manufacturers, th these are the options that are installed from the distributor, distributor. So this is all the equipment that it has from the factory, this and this. This. then it gets to a port and the distributor puts all of this stuff on at port so then you've got a uh, distributor options is 1300 bucks so the actual MSRP from Toyota is 54245 with a 1550 processing and handling fee the distributor puts on their stuff which is $1300 worth and that's where you get your total MSRP of 55,545 for the two-wheel drive limited crew max tundra oh by the way the color on this one is called celestial silver metallic and the interior color is called black soft what a glorious machine thank you so much toyota for making this baby i don't know if you guys know this but i absolutely love i am obsessed with turbo chargers i love them and what's better than turbo twin turbo this thing's got a 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 it's called an iForce uh, twin turbo and this thing makes 389 horsepower with 479 pound foot of torque that's a ton there's also an iForce max and that is a twin turbo 3.5 liter twin turbo setup as well but it combines hybrid technology with a single motor generator attached to it between the engine and the transmission and that makes a boat load more so that one actually has the, the one with the hybrid technology on it actually almost makes like diesel torque feel it almost makes it feel like it you could pull a house down i think it's like 500 and almost 600 pound foot of torque in that thing and you can tow a maximum of 12,000 pounds with the big boy hybrid twin turbo v6 it's absolutely incredible technology and who would have thought that a 3.5 liter v6 has more horsepower more torque and is more fuel efficient than a v8 that's just unbelievable it goes to show you that it might have been worth the 16 years since the old generation into the new generation tundra since i've been out here filming this thing a couple of people have pulled up one of them was in the old generation uh, tundra and he was just absolutely blown away by this vehicle it's 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 just incredible let's take a quick look at the engine and then let's start it up now i'm no expert on this engine uh, i'm no expert on the location of where the turbochargers are but i've got a sneaky suspicion that one goes here and one goes here see that so that's a if that's right then then that's pretty cool not 100 percent sure though <laughs> there's your oil dipstick brake fluid battery coolant windshield washer fluid is about right there then you got a, your relays and fuses both left and right air filter another filter so there's a lot going on in this engine and I think this thing is absolutely going to be around for a long time and of course it's going to move into all kinds of different applications wouldn't it be absolutely awesome to have a totally newly redesigned Toyota 4Runner with a twin turbo V6 hybrid in it and you could call it a 
you know, I, I don't know, I don't know about a TRD Pro Forerunner because I think you would want to name it something like Type something. I don't know. That that would just be an awesome, like more of a performance or a performance Tacoma. Can you imagine putting a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 hybrid engine in a Tacoma and just having it blow the doors off of things? That would be, or putting this configuration in a uh, in a Corolla, Toyota, please do a performance line for us and put this twin turbo V6 hybrid engine in all kinds of things and just blow our minds with it. We would love that. Thanks, Toyota. So I'm opening up the back end or the, the second row seating and uh, I'm, I'm looking at the functionality of the back seat just now and I saw something really, really cool. Take a look at this. You can see right here that the backs, the bottoms of the back seats are folded up and I'll show you how that works in just a second. But take a look at these little dividers right here that are in the, the middle of, of this. So you can see there that there's a plastic piece and that lifts up and it indicates on there that the plastic piece goes in and that toward the front of the vehicle, okay? And there are these little slots here that these pieces secure down into in the floor. Right here, right here, and you can see the side pieces. And so you can use these, and there's another one there. And this is actually a ton of room. But you can take this and you can compartmentalize it. So if I put this here and I latch it down, so now I have three different compartments underneath each of the seating positions in the back seat in the second row. So if you've got three passengers, you can be like, hey, here's your storage box, here's your box, and here's your box. Plenty of storage. What's really, really neat here is that on one side it says built in Texas, designed in, can you guess that? That would be Michigan. So the all-new Tundra is designed in Michigan, built in Texas. That is so cool. So it's American-made and designed. I love that. But whenever you uh, want to, you can actually have three different compartments. Again, that's ton of store. That's a ton of storage. And if you need dry storage, if it's nasty outside, you need to put something here that'll fit in this compartment. That's great. You also have cutouts here. So that if, if you and you can see there's a cutout there. Uh, so if you have something long that you need to put there, you can do that. Really, really nice thought. All right, here are the seat bottoms. And I told you that I was going to show you this. You notice that the seat bottom will not come back down. There is a strap right here that you can pull. There it is. So you can pull this up toward you and it will release the locking system that allows the seat bottom to then go back into position. And the thing I like about this too is that there's not a release to have to put the seat bottom up. So you can actually just take that and put it up. You don't have, there's, there's no need for it to lock or to unlock and then go up. But once you go up, it locks into place and it won't move. Then you take this, you pull it back down and there's your seat. Uh, the other thing too is the way to do the seat bottom or the seat back is right here. And here is one of the designs that I absolutely love. If you know cars, you know that headrests are notoriously bad for being virtually impossible to pull up because of the way the posts are configured. There are tabs here though. You can see that little tab right there. And then there's another little tab right there. So once those are squeezed in and I had already done that one once those are squeezed in this thing comes right up it's going to tilt forward so that the seat bottom can move forward without having to move this front seat that is a genius idea thank you toyota for doing that so there you go and there's your seat bottom folded and i mean it's, it's still kind of at an upward angle but that's okay whatever top tether means this is where you're going to put uh secure a child safety seat so you can see that there is an anchor there you just put your seat child safety seat belt right there it looks like there's a jack right here with your towing materials if if this seat bottom were folded down you could actually put a bag there maybe a grocery bag whatever uh so there you go and that's the story of the back seat. Now I'm not sure if Toyota has made any modifications to the size of the second row uh, in the Crew Max, but this is amazing. Look how much knee room I have, and I adjusted the seat, the front seat, the driver's seat for my position, and this is incredible. 
I have tons and tons of room. I would be able to fit three grown men in the back with no problem. Uh, there's not this gigantic hump here to get in the way. There's a small hump. It's probably probably eight eight inches high. That's not, not that big of a deal. Plus, I have chargers in the back. I have air vents in the back. I have handles in the back. And then I have that beautiful shelf that is in the front seat. Look at that. I've got it in the back seat. This is a, a such common sense design that it's really super nice and then as i mentioned before if the uh, if this panel were open with the panoramic sunroof it's going to make it feel that much more open and roomy i've got this nice uh, center console here for, with uh, two cup holders here so there's actually four cup holders for the rear passengers now the the rear headroom is is a little bit lacking i think that's actually because of the addition of the sunroof i don't know if you can get one without the roof but if you had one without the roof this would probably be a little bit better not a hundred percent sure but uh it, it has less headroom than the back or than the front but still this is this is tremendous leg room plenty of room right here in the back now the seating situation inside the Tundra is a whole lot better. I like the way the seats feel from the aspect of the fact that uh, it's you, you can be wide and big and get in here comfortably. I'm, I'm over six feet tall and I have the seat adjusted to where I would normally be driving uh, and I've got tons of headroom. And also here's another thing that I really noticed about the seat adjustment. It goes way, way down. It might look like I'm moving the seat back right now, but I'm not. Look how far down I can go in this seat. And look how much room I have, headroom I have now. And and again, this is this is incredible because for people over six feet tall to make it look like this in the cabin i look small in this cabin right now and that's due in large part to the fact that this seat goes so far down the cabin as far as like what the buttons look like and how everything functions if you're used to toyota vehicles everything is going to be very very similar so it's kind of unique because you're used to it, you're comfortable with it if you know Toyota products already, but it's completely different. It's, it's really, really cool. Everything is very reachable. There is a shelf over here for your arm. Take a look at this shelf. See this? So this is the interior door, and then there's this big shelf. I absolutely love the arrangement of this shelf. That is so fantastic. And there's, of course, the passenger side door matches. But look at that. That is great to, to put your arm on. And I know that's simple, but it's really nice. Look at these big, huge air vents. That's pretty cool looking, nice and utilitarian looking, carbon fiber looking material right there. Uh, it's basically just plastic. Uh, an another thing that kind of struck me as a little bit interesting is the fact that this windshield is, is like shortened. It, you can't really tell it on the video, but when you're in the truck, it, it looks like the windshield is almost squished a little bit especially when you compare it to the height of this big passenger window you can see that and how it just kind of comes down a little bit i don't think that that's going to be a problem or anything because as you can see the view out of it is is really really nice plus you've got 60 million cameras on the outside of this thing but it it just kind of struck me as a little bit odd uh you can see how the the inside of the door panel here looks really put together everything is very clean it's it's like it's a no frills situation and this is a limited model so this is a little bit higher end uh, but everything is basically the same color there's a little bit of brushed aluminum looking trim here a little bit of piano black there brushed aluminum door handle and then a little bitty thin strip of material right here i love how you have the automatic chi wireless charger there you just place your phone down on it and it fires right up your climate system here very nice very easy to use very user friendly you can see that it's got uh, dual zone climate control here sync mode heated and ventilated front seats as well all of your climate settings right here the gear shifter right there drive mode select 
And so, you know, your automatic parking brake, everything. And then you have this big, massive center console with a ton of storage. A couple of cup holders there, big storage there, little platform here, a couple of cup holders for your rear passengers here. And then you can go right here and you've got a button. You've got a button on either side of this massive console. And that lifts up and you have even more storage there. This is kind of cool. You can lift this out and it's got a picture of the Toyota SUV slash truck lineup right there on the bottom portion of this little piece here. And I think what that is there for, I think, is that if you have like an iPad or something, you can charge it right here. You can run the cord through there and then you can place your iPad right here sideways by little coin holders there, coin slots. Uh, there's a light right here. So big, big storage. That's really nice. The steering wheel is really nice. I like how thick it is, and uh, it's it's just super super functional. Uh, these the this side material here is really really grippy. That's that's got a really good feel to it when it's in your hand. And then on the left side of the steering wheel, you have all kinds of different settings. And this is going to control on the left side. This is going to tr control your multi information display, and that's what's going to pop up between the tack and the speedometer here all right there it used to be a one multi-directional keypad now there's kind of two different functions here you have okay up and down and then you can also push that in you have left and right there we'll take a look at that in a minute and then over here on the right side is going to be all kinds of safety things like radar cruise control lane trace assist mode and this is going to be for your stereo so the way to think about this is everything on the bottom that is in this piano black trim you have volume voice commands mode and then left and right that's all audio on the bottom side and then this is all multi-information display bluetooth and then driving controls here cruise control lane trace assist all those things so that's really nice you have a bank of buttons down here on the left side and then this is going to be uh, for your truck bed light automatic high beams automatic engine shut off that's going to be gauge brightness odometer and trip and then right here is your um, feature that tells you when somebody is behind you and it'll actually stop the truck if you're getting too close to somebody heated steering wheel and then that's control to the power outlet uh, over here on the left side is going to be for your driver window and door and lock controls this is neat there's a little bitty lever he right here over here on the top left and that is to control your rear view mirrors so you can take that and fold those in manually and then that's automatic and that's manually out that's pretty nice so whenever it's in the a position in the middle they will automatically fold in when you cut off the truck you can see it says set one and two that's going to control your seat position and your mirror controls i'm a little bit surprised it doesn't have a power tilt and telescope steering wheel being the limited trim but you can just move this down and then it will tilt and telescope uh, for you right there this is something neat i've never seen this before i've been in the truck running for a little bit and it says vehicle will automatically turn off if parked for one hour and that happened when i opened the door let me see and the engine's running right now yeah so the engine's running right now the door is open and it says vehicle will automatically turn off if parked for one hour perform auto off or keep vehicle on here's the key for the tundra you can see on the top you have lock unlock hold and hold this hold uh, releases the truck bed this hold is the panic alarm and this is a new key also it's just kind of plain you've seen a million of these uh, as far as smart keys are concerned so that's pretty basic you do have a little lever here on the back side and that's going to release a physical key inside the key fob and that will be used to get into the truck in the event that the battery in the key fob dies at which point you'll just put this in the key slot on the outside of the truck unlock the door manually and then get in and once that does happen if the if the key or if the battery here is like really really low and it won't unlock for you opening the door handle then you can get in and you can just start it um, it will still start several times even if the key battery needs to be replaced uh, at which point though you will need to have it replaced that's a nice key 
kind of fat. And this setup here is going to control everything that happens in your multi-information display right here on the dash in between your tachometer and your speedometer. So let's take a look at that now. What I'm gonna be doing is pressing up, down, left and right, and okay, in order to control the information that is listed in this multi-information display. So right now you can see it says outside temperature is 69 degrees, it's 1137, and then you can see to, above 1137 you have an icon that is right there, and that is going to be your lane trace assist, assist and steering assist, and that's on the right side of the steering wheel. And then above that, or to the right of that, that is right there with, it looks like two lines going into a point. Uh, that is going to be your radar cruise control. And so whenever you hit the, the button on the right side of the steering wheel for radar cruise control, and that's the icon right there, the green icon, it says radar ready. You can then hit the button that looks like the lines on the right side of the steering wheel, and you can change the distance that it's going to allow between you and the vehicle in front of you. That is how you change that distance. So that's going to that's the it's going to keep you further away from the vehicle in front of you when it's in all three blocks that's the next nearest and that's the closest. I actually like to drive with that but that's personally for me uh, that's something that you'll have to get used to. Uh, and then I'm going to press down over here uh, on the left side of the steering wheel on the toggle and PCS is pre-collision system. That feature only works if you are about to get into a wreck. So you never actually want to test that. It's there and it's a fantastic feature. BSM is blind spot monitor. That's what causes the lights to light up in the side mirrors of the Tundra whenever somebody's in your blind spot. That is park assist. Park assist are the sonar sensors that are in the bumpers and that's what beeps if you get too close to something in a parking lot. RCTA is rear cross traffic alert. If you're backing up and somebody is coming from the left or the right that you can't see, it will let you know. RSA is your uh, what reads road signs for you. And then trailer settings, trailer light check, and vehicle settings. Trailer settings, this is actually really, really cool. And I'll show you that in just a second. But trailer light check will cycle the turn signals and brake lamps 10 times. Just to let you know, if you're by yourself, it will you can you can uh, plug in your trailer to the Tundra, and just to make sure that the lights are working, it'll flash the brake lights ten times to make sure that the trailer lights are properly connected. That is so smart. I love that feature. Uh, and then vehicle settings, and again, all I'm doing is pressing up and down and left and right and then regular settings, okay? So that's gonna be on all of the like kind of safety features and all those types of things. I'm gonna press left on the steering wheel and then no trailer selected. And I'll, again, I'll tell you about the trailer stuff in just a second. Compass, pushing up, radar ready. So that this page right here, the one that's lit up in, the, in white, you see that? Uh, represents your compass and your radar digital speedometer no messages and then back to settings so that's going to be everything in your center multi information display you see that right there so what we're going to do is push down on this and I'll show you what pops up in our display you can see here it says trailer backup guide no saved trailers TBG canceled push OK to add a trailer. This is absolutely awesome. The Tundra can actually um, basically steer you into a tight space, whether it's a boat ramp or a, a, like if you're backing in your camper into a camping spot or basically anything. And you can actually put your trailer or your camper or your ATV or your snowmobile or any of that into the system and it will automatically know how to steer and how to compensate for the trailer length. I'm going to press OK and you can see add a new trailer and then you can go my trailer. That's if it's a custom size. Utility, cargo, boat, camper. Check that out. Pop-up camper. So you have all of these different things. 
So let's just say I have my trailer. I'm going to push OK. And then it gives me the selections. What's the hitch type? What's the length? I'm going to press OK. And then I can change the length if I want to customize the length of my trailer. Let's say I, I, I bought a trailer from a buddy and it's a unique size. I can select sizes from three feet all the way up to 39 feet, I believe, or longer than 39 feet. <laughs> That's a long dang trailer. So I can, I can then input the trailer length and there's six feet. It's got one axle, brake type, and so then I can, I can select the, the braking type based on weight. I'm, I'm actually going to go back on that one. And then I can hit save. However, I don't actually have a six foot trailer, so I'm just going to hit auto detect. And then I'm going to go back on that as well. So that is my trailer. And then I can repeat the process on any trailer type, as you can see here, as it fits. And then here's my actual physical trailer brake control right there. So plus minus right there. And speaking of brakes, there's a feature right here and it says pull on. That's my parking brake. So I can do that and, and hear it come on. Uh, and then here is brake hold. That's a feature that allows the brakes to remain engaged. Even if I take my foot off the brake at a stoplight, you do have to push that every time if you want to, every time you start the Tundra, if you actually want to use that. So let's just say I, I'm in drive and I come to a stoplight. If that is engaged, I can take my foot off the brake and it will hold it for me. And then when the light turns green, I just hit the gas and go. That's a, that's a nice feature. I like that. Then I have view. This is wide view camera monitor system. And that is going to be in this beautiful, wonderful new display. This thing has been totally, totally redone. And I've left this welcome screen open this whole time. Uh, just, I wanted you to see how amazing this is. We're going to get into that here in just a second, but view system. So there's my wide view camera monitor system. So now this is performing a uh, overall 360 degree sweep of everything that's uh, around the truck. That's really, really nice. I love that. And so there, there it is. It's completely finished. Now, when I put the truck in reverse, foot on the brake, I can see I've got all kinds of different cam camera options right here. Then you can see down here below, look at all those different camera options. So there's several cameras on the outside, obviously, and right here down below is the view, all the different views. So what's highlighted is the back, and then I can go here, and that's the front camera. Side mirror cameras facing forward, side mirror cameras facing backward above the truck bed and then I can go back here and then the guides are highlighted so you can see I can go here and then on the right side you can see it's going to put a different overlay on the rear of the Tundra in order to help me with backing so I like that then when I turn the wheel I'm turning the wheel right now you can see that the guide on the back turns as well so that's telling me if the if I keep the steering wheel at the angle it's currently at that this is the direction of the truck right there and then I have it set to automatically come on so that's really really nice you're taking a look at the headlight stalk and so right here you can see it says DRL off that's daytime running lights off auto they will automatically come on as the Sun goes down parking lights and headlights on fully manually basically there's also a little icon right here and you can see it says there's an a inside of a headlight and that's automatic high beams and the way automatic high beams works is the tundra can sense whenever somebody is in oncoming traffic or if you're behind somebody it can actually sense that and if automatic high beams is on and someone is around you in your proximity to where you don't want to blind them, the Tundra will sense it and it will automatically bring down your high beams so you don't blind people. Whenever there's no one around, it will automatically bring up your high beams so that you can maximize the potential 
of your headlights. That's actually a wonderful feature because a lot of people only use their high beams when they're out in the country or completely isolated. This allows you to use your high beams in any situation if you want to, and the truck will be able to compensate when no one's around so you can maximize your headlights. It's wonderful because if you're in an urban setting or if you're in a neighborhood at night and no one's around, you can use your high beams and you can see so much more. It's a great feature, automatic high beams. And then here's your wiper stalk. I'm actually a little bit surprised that this thing does not have automatic rain sensing wipers, but I don't see it. You can see it says mist. You can push this up once and it will wipe the uh, windshield once for mist. The default is off. That's where there's a little bitty dot right there. And then intermittent, low and high are all activated by pulling this stalk down. And then you can change the intermittent speed based on rainfall right here on the inside. And then you can pull this in order to wash off your windshield. Is a panoramic sunroof totally necessary in a Tundra? No. Is it absolutely awesome? Yeah. You would think that a panoramic sunroof in a truck is like a useless, pointless thing. I think it's a great idea. It changes the lighting in it. It makes an, a, a cavernous cabin feel big and open and light and airy. And I know that whenever you're looking for a Tundra, you're not looking for a big, open, airy, light cabin, but it's a nice add. And this, this as you can see, the sunroof goes all the way, way back to well over the passengers, if you have any passengers in the back, all the way forward to ahead of the front passengers. I may be starstruck with it a little bit because the lighting in here is so good for taking video, but it actually does add a completely different element to it that is super nice. If I had one of these, I would drive with this open all the time. It is wonderful and airy and light. <laughs> okay, everybody, this is the moment you maybe have been waiting for because this is one of the biggest upgrades on the new Tundra is that finally we have an all new multimedia system in a Toyota vehicle. And I love this. I hope this is a sign of things to come. Check this out. Please select your language. We are in English. Uh, we don't need to do this right now. We're not going to link it to a mobile app. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to hit yes and look at that. Navigation reimagined. Our navigation has been rebuilt from the ground up. Tap the button below to subscribe. I don't want to subscribe right now. I'm going to go down these screens here just to see if I can get into it another way. So here is our audio. And as you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous. I can tell that this is a big, big screen. The thing I love about this screen is that it doesn't get in the way at all, really, no matter how you have your seat adjusted. So it's like, you know, there's a lot of camera screens that stick up out of the dash. And by the way, you've got an extra little panel right up here for storage above the screen. And there is also a charger right there. Uh, but the thing that I love about this is that it looks like it's integrated in with your air vents here and it's it's just kind of blended in as as well as you can you still have these corners here but that's fine it's not like it's sticking up out of the dash and it looks like it's in an odd place there's no need for it to move it's obviously a fixed screen so this is a brilliant setup because it's totally integrated into the dash and that is a great great thing you can see that the the screen is also kind of like a paper white and it looks super clean and it, it's kind of underdone which is a good thing there's it's not like super showy so we can go sources there you go that is brilliant and i imagine when you go manage devices it's going to ask you to hook up a phone yeah so whenever you go to your device's Bluetooth settings, this is where you can pair it. We're not gonna pair anything right now, but then if you had an Apple device or an Android device paired, since this now has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, that's the first time that it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto other than the Supra. That doesn't really count because Toyota, I think, has sold 12 of those. No, I'm just kidding. This is the first time in a mass-produced vehicle or that Toyota sells a lot of that you have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Then there's Tune, so you can search FM stations here, search AM stations here, search XM stations there, so you can 
tuned to station brings up the beautiful display of the station itself and then you can go there so that's that's really nice that's how you can search for things I was wondering how that was going to work because normally there is a tune button uh, there's a power button or a knob here normally there's a tune one here when I got in I only saw one and I'm like what's up so that's how you're going to tune your your stations whether it's AM FM or uh, satellite then I can go here and I can memorize that as a favorite and that's going to put it at the top of that list so that's going to be uh, your stations as far as your radio you can combine uh, fm am and sirius xm all on one page that's really really nice check this out fm radio you can go here and you can search all kinds of different fm stations that is so cool look at that so it used to whenever you would want to memorize a station you would press and hold and for this one i think all you do is press the heart and it's gonna put it right here. There's your uh, cover art right there. That is such a cool feature. I love that. And then you can go here, it's listing your favorites. You can go here and edit, and then you can add, I mean, you can delete your favorites that you have right here. I imagine you would probably be able to put in the neighborhood of 30 something favorites, not 100% sure, but uh, you can probably do that. And then it plays them in HD. And since HD has the, the bandwidth of HD has the ability to broadcast more than one station or more than one channel on one number here on one band, you can go 94.1 HD one, 94.1 HD two. So it's, it's whenever you select 94.1, if you go here, it will display all of the 94.1s available to you. Golly, that is such cool technology. And then there's AM, all AM stations there. Goodness gracious. And then you can go back to Sirius, XM, and then of course, this is gonna be all kinds. That is so great. And you can see here, I just press the phone icon and to connect a device, I can just press that and it goes to the search for Toyota Tundra in your device's Bluetooth settings. Not gonna do that right now, how that is to work. Here is a lot of trip information for the Tundra. So I can go current and this uh, down along the bottom is in 15 minute intervals. And this is gonna be very, very limited data because all I've been doing is sitting here idling in the truck. It's gonna be a lot different than that when you actually start to drive. So that's gonna be all under trip information. I can go settings. If you own one of these or if you just got a Tundra, you wanna start in this section first because this is how you're going to basically customize the Tundra in all all of these different ways to operate exactly the way you want it to operate. Right now, I'm registered as a guest. I can hit that and I can register my profile. I can hit get started and I'm gonna link the Toyota mobile app. I don't wanna do that right now, but this allows me to register the car or the truck and to add from the Toyota mobile app into the Toyota itself. I can enter the number and on the next screen, receive a download link. I'm gonna cancel that, yes. Then I can go personal info. And so this, if I have gone through this first step, all of that stuff is gonna be here under personal info. I can hit Bluetooth and devices. I'm gonna go back and then general. Uh, general, super easy and I love how easy this is. I, you've, you've been noticing that as I hit the screen that it's beeping and now that is going to cut it off. See that? Uh, screen sensitivity and so uh, oh that's neat higher value will allow a smoother operation with gloves if I'm using this as a work truck then and I'm wearing work gloves but I still need to make adjustments right here at some point I want to put that on three because it's going to allow the screen to sense my gloved hands easier and then uh, date and time set time manually set time automatically this allows the truck to automatically change the time based on the time zone i'm in so if i cross time zones it's going to going to sense it and it's going to automatically update the clock for me that's really nice wi-fi of course you have wi-fi in it you can go sound and media automatic sound levelizer that's going to adjust the speed based on ambient road noise 
and so uh, whenever I'm driving if there's road noise coming into the cabin then it's going to automatically adjust or bring the sound up a little bit to help compensate for the road noise so this is how I can uh, adjust the center of the balance and fade and I can do it manually like that God, that's so nice. And display cover art. You saw earlier when I was making adjustments and memorizing uh, stations in the AM and FM and XM situation there, it's, it had cover art. Well, there you go. Grace Note is the software that uh, allows you to use cover art or allows the cover art to be displayed whenever you are memorizing things. So that's really nice. Uh, vehicle customize. So nice do this whenever you get one of these things uh, so headlights auto auto on sensitivity is normal and so if you want the uh, sensitivity of the headlights to change whenever it turns the headlights on whenever it's in automatic mode we looked at that earlier uh, you can go bright and or brighter if it's on, on brighter then the headlights will cut on automatically when the sun is still kind of out in the sky uh, dark is as the sun is going down or darker normal it's just normal <laughs> daytime running lights are on uh, door control uh, automatically lock whenever the transmission shifts from park or you can change that by speed or you can cut that off kind of a safety thing automatically unlock when you shift it to park I don't necessarily like that feature that's just my personal opinion because I don't want all of my doors to automatically unlock every time I shift the tundra into park I honestly want to leave that off so whenever I shift my tundra into park I don't want anything to happen with the unlocking or the locking of my doors so I cut that off I'm gonna go to park just because that's the factory default and somebody else can change that but that's what that means the doors are automatically going to unlock when you shift it into park personal preference wireless electronic key so what do you want to happen whenever you have the key fob and whenever you press unlock twice do you want all the doors to unlock well yeah that's the setting that's gonna happen right now lock when the door is open unlock driver's door only or when when you are using smart access so whenever you have this in your pocket and you touch the door handle only the driver's door right now is going to unlock all doors that's what I would prefer but factory default we're gonna leave it the way it is auto relock timer if you press unlock twice and all the doors unlock on the tundra after 60 seconds if it senses that there's no activity it's going to automatically relock the doors you can change that to 30 seconds 120 seconds or you can cut that off to where it doesn't auto relock at all boarding and exit seat slide so this allows the seat to slide away from the uh, from the steering wheel and the dash whenever you exit or whenever you uh, open the door and so I like that full because it gives you uh, a lot more room to get back into the tundra whenever you need to a voice and search wake word hey Toyota what do you want to do nothing sorry I'm having trouble understanding so that's pretty cool whenever you get in and you say that phrase what I just said as you can see it will automatically wake up the navigation system and then you can use your Siri button or CarPlay or whatever if your phone is hooked up you can then use all kinds of voice prompts there that's pretty cool well to wrap up the video here I said we take this Tundra on a ride this of course is my first time driving the Tundra I've heard a lot about the ride quality because of the fact that it doesn't have leaf springs in the back it's got a multi-link suspension and all those things but the other thing too is going to be the torque that this twin turbo v6 has um, and of course the the fuel economy you know I, th I think you're going to get probably reasonably around 19 to 20 average I can already tell man I can tell it instantly that the ride of this thing is so much better than the outgoing Tundra it felt totally effortless because I think it's got such good torque because of the fact that it's got a 10-speed transmission 
you can put a lot more torque in gears one, two, and three. And uh, so, so when you press on the gas, it feels like you're barely having to really even push on it at all. It is crazy quiet. And of course, I, I, I would imagine Toyota has done sound dampening materials, enhanced sound dampening things in order to give it a quieter ride. But there is literally zero trucky feel to it. It feels like a big, heavy SUV, but it, it doesn't drive heavy. I'm doing 55 right now, and I've got the, the panel for the roof open and there's virtually zero wind noise. There's a little bit of wind noise that I can tell it's coming from the rear view mirror here. I can already tell that this thing would be fantastic on a long trip. All right, I'm gonna gas it a little bit. Oh, that is weird. Holy free holies. Typically in a V8, you would have that big throaty V8 sound, and that is not at all the case here. There's very little engine noise at all. You can hear it a little bit, but you can feel the turbos kick in when you press on the gas. There's, there's like, depending on how hard you press on the gas, there's that gentle pull from the, from the turbos kicking in, but it's just, it's just there. My goodness. So there's 70. lane trace assist it's telling me to get over because it sensed I got over without turning on the turn signal when you turn on your turn signal and you cross the lane of traffic it won't beep at you like that you've got almost sports car acceleration in a massive full-size pickup truck that's just not supposed to exist. Whenever I stop the truck, the screen transitions into this beautiful, huge display uh, looking out into the front of the vehicle and also the overhead view. So that automatically turns on whenever I'm at lower speeds. And that is a setting that you can change in case you would want to leave it on the map or something like that. I'm going around a highway entrance right now an on-ramp and it's there's very little body roll it's very even yeah you can't even feel the transmission shifting I know some people like to feel the pop of the transmission to, to me when you combine the engine note that you have with this uh, when you really push the gas with the quick shift of the transmission God, that is fantastic. I'm going to shift this over because, as I mentioned before, it is a 10-speed sequential shift automatic transmission. So at any speed, you can take the gear shifter, flip it over, and now I can see we're in eighth gear. I'm going to gear down a little bit. That's seven. That's six. And then the tachometer is shooting up a little bit. Fifth gear, I'm at 60 miles an hour. I'm going to punch it a little bit. gear seven and it's automatically shifting for me so now I'm going to shift out of sequential shift I'm going to shift the gear shift lever to the right and now we're just cruising if you have an old gen tundra you need to come drive one of these things even if it's not the iForce max this this twin turbo v6 is absolutely a thing of beauty the only thing I don't like about the drive is there is a some some wind noise right here and I think it's because of that big rear view mirror I mean it's okay it's just one of those things that you get used to but uh, overall and I think it kind of strikes me because of the fact that everything else is just crazy quiet man that's this is this is a phenomenal vehicle Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our look at the 2022 Toyota Tundra Limited Crew Max. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Again, I would like to say a huge thank you to Modern Toyota in Asheboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this beautiful Tundra. I'll be sure to leave all of their contact information, including their website, in the description box below. But remember, the most important thing, have a wonderful day, everybody.